Hi everyone and welcome to Washington Echoes where we travel back through time. Washington is centrally located within the triangle of Newcastle, Sunderland and Durham in Northeast England. Please subscribe now to keep updated with local history in and around the Washington area. I'm Audrey Fletcher and I'm here today to share with you a short history of Fatfield Bridge, originally known as Pensher Bridge, which spans the River Weir. Fatfield Bridge was designed by David Balfour in 1888 in response to a need for a bridge to carry the traffic from Washington to Houghtonley Spring. He was born in Dundee, Scotland in 1838, but shortly after his marriage to Margaret Law in 1865, the couple moved to Sunderland Street in Houghtonley Spring as a result of David being appointed engineer to the Sunderland and Houghton Highway Board. He had an extensive consulting practice and was responsible for a large number of engineering works carried out in many parts of England and Scotland, including bridges, railway and tramway work, shipping staiths and shipbuilding yards. David and his wife brought up their four children in Sunderland Street until 1891, when they moved into a nine-roomed residence at nearby Meyer Hall where he died on the 22nd of December, 1914, aged 76. In the top photo to the left of the screen, you will see Temple Lane, Dundee, where David Balfour lived with his parents until his marriage in 1865. His father was manager of the Dundee, Perth and London Shipping Company. In the bottom photo, you will see Sunderland Street, Houghtonley Spring, where David Balfour lived with his family for over 20 years. In reality, there had been a need for a bridge across the River Weir at Fatfield to carry the traffic from Washington to Pensher and Houghtonley Spring since the time of the Romans and even earlier. However, people may do with crossing on foot at low tide and by boat or ferry when the tide was in. The photos to the left of the screen show how the river could be forded at low tide. And the photo below is an example of how the Bronze Age people would have crossed the river at high tide. In fact, the ferry boat in was situated at just this same crossing point. Fatfield Bridge was officially opened by the Earl of Durham in January 1890. The original crossing of the River Weir at Fatfield was on the opposite side of Worm Hill, about half a mile upstream from the Fatfield Bridge, at Biddick Ford. Following the 1789 map by Gibson, the road from Uswith followed down through Washington Village at the far eastern end of the Green, just behind the original Washington Grammar School, then straight on down through Biddick Lane on the western side of Worm Hill. This route takes us through the area where the Bronze Age village was situated and where the Kist burials were discovered in 1907. After crossing the river at Biddick Ford, the road continued southwards until it met a major road junction. A left turn led to Houghtonley Spring and on to Sunderland, while a right turn led directly to Durham. As these three towns were occupied by Romans, I would strongly suggest that there was a Roman fort on the south bank of the River Weir at Fatfield, guarding the river crossing as was the case at Chesterley Street. When Fatfield Bridge was in the planning stages, Wormhill Terrace did not exist. 
the road did not exist. Neither did the road directly on the other side of the proposed bridge exist. The road building works were incorporated into the £8,000 costing for the building of the bridge. The photo to the left of the screen shows the newly created approach road to Fatfield Bridge, appropriately named Worm Hill Terrace, as it faces directly onto the legendary Worm Hill. The 1913 map to the right of the screen shows the original Biddick Lane, which in times past led down to the River Weir and beyond. It also shows the newly constructed roads on both sides of Fatfield Bridge, Wormhill Terrace on the Washington side and Station Road on the Pensha side. Fatfield Bridge is of a tied arch or bowstring design with stone abutments and wrought iron girders. I would mention that the following sizes are all in imperial measurements, as they were in 1890. The foundations consist of concrete overlying a pitch pine double platform, which in turn is supported on 12-inch piles, which have been driven into hard shale 25 feet under the riverbed. The abutments are of large rock-faced ashlar which have 12 feet high main pillars adjoining the approach parapet walls. The span of the bridge is 145 feet, while the road and pathway is 32 feet. The net height of the bridge above the watermark is 20 feet. It is estimated that there are about 200 tonnes of ironwork in the bridge. The approach roads on both sides of the bridge are 25 feet wide and total almost a mile long. The construction of the bridge and associated roadworks were quite a big undertaking back in 1889 and greatly appreciated. July 1st, 1916 was the first day of the Battle of the Somme. There were over 57,000 British casualties on that day, among whom there were 19,240 who lost their lives, making it the bloodiest day in British military history. In commemoration of the 28 soldiers from Harriton who died at the Somme, 2,016 hand-knitted poppies cascaded from the Fatfield Bridge from July 1st through to October 31st, 2016. A heartfelt and fitting tribute. They shall not grow old, as we that are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun and in the morning, we will remember them. I thought that I would conclude with some old and new photos of Fatfield Bridge. You will notice that on the middle bottom photo, the road has not yet been completed, which would date the postcard to, oh, about 1890. Walking by the river at Fatfield is so relaxing on a sunny day. When I was a youngster living at number 15, the terraces, next to the Victoria, Columbia, a group of us girls would walk down to the water side, then along the bridle path to Fatfield Bridge. There we would turn right up Wormhill Terrace, onto Biddick Lane, and finally end up back home. We had come full circle. And the beautiful Riverside Walk has the same lure today. Well everyone, I hope that you have enjoyed this presentation and subscribed to my channel. 
I look forward to sharing my continued research into Washington history with you in my next video. Bye for now.